Okay, so I got some help this evening, and we're going to do stage two of this AI uh, video. I found this really cool um, AI timing chart that a friend of mine had. Really uh, pretty good here. You should breed um, kind of in the middle of the heat cycle. I mean, some people recommend saying wait till after they're um, walking away from the buck. I feel like that's a little too late. I like to try to get doe kids. Um, so remember that um, the female sperm will swim, sl swim slower, uh, but live longer. And the male sperm swim faster, but don't live quite as long. So if you can actually get your semen deposited before ovulation, those female sperm are going to be there at the time of ovulation. So anyway, kind of a cute, uh, or a really nice chart here The list that. And then she's also got this really nice... Uh, heat indication uh, chart so that you could track things if you need to uh, keep track of things. I guess I just uh, don't really use this. I just have been doing it for so many years, but it is something good to keep in mind. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select my semen. I have uh, located it um, using my chart. I'm going to go ahead and pull two straws this doe, I'm, it's now November, and I really just want to make sure that we settle her. I do know the quality of the semen is very good, um, but I'm going to go ahead and use two straws right off the bat just because I want a little bit of insurance. So here in my jacket, in my vest, this is what I wear. I have my two, I have two sheaths, and I have two guns, and they're under my armpit, um, warming to get warm. I'm going to take those two straws, I'm going to go here to my thaw jar, and then we're going to walk out to the barn and then we're going to show the actual AI. So right now I just wanted to show the selection of the straws. I'm actually just going to kind of set these on the floor because I need to let them air off a little bit of the nitrogen to make sure we don't get any um, popping. You want to always handle them by the wax tip allow any nitrogen to come off. This is what I showed earlier. I'm going to put that right into the warm water. Same with straw number two. Um, looks like I'm poking up a little bit there. I'm just going to put that little, remember I said my thaw jar has that little uh, floater. Make sure that you dry that. Water is very spermicidal to our semen. So now that semen's going to be safe there in those thaw jar, in the thaw jar, until I can get out to my goat and we're going to go do that. So I'm going to now ready. I have my dough. She's in heat. Um, I Now I have this vest. I really like it because I can put my light, my lube, my speculum, all right here, my guns are here. We've got the straws here in our thaw jar. Now we're gonna go ahead and prep that. And load our straws. So again, I'm not sure if you guys can see what I'm doing here, but I'm just now cracking the plastic on my sheets, the individual sheets. See here the wax plug on these straws. We want to make sure we keep um, as much water away from there as we can. Like I said, uh, water is spermicidal. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these. One. Two. Now I'm going to dry it again. I'm keeping the bottom, of, and I couldn't show you this in the earlier video, but I'm just keeping the bottom of the straw in the thaw jar to keep it at the right temperature. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull these all the way up and I'm going to wipe them and I'm going to shove them really quickly into these sheaths.
once I get them down into my body, we're safe again. Okay, remember I'm pushing now, I'm working with a continental gun, so I gotta push that barrel down first on top of the sheath, or I'm sorry, on top of the straw. Push the barrel down very firmly. Take that nut, screw it in really tight. And now, you know, you can kind of relax a little bit because the semen is under my arm. It's nice and warm. Everything's safe here. Okay, so now we're going to go to our dough. Um, and you don't have to be super careful about... I mean, obviously we want to be cleanly. We do not want to introduce any water. Uh, really to this situation. So I actually just use a little bit of my lube on a paper towel And I actually just wipe her just like this to remove that big debris that was there on her vulva and Just to, to clean her up just a little bit You have to think about how dirty bucks are and we are definitely cleaner than buck than a buck right now as we're doing our AI So I have my paper towel right here that had my speculum nice and wrapped up in a paper towel we're gonna go ahead, I'm hoping you guys can see this. I'm just gonna put on a real good amount of that lube there. Okay, now some speculums are tapered or rounded one way or the other. This one is pretty circular without any, but you wanna try to insert the speculum at a little bit of, I don't wanna say 45, but a definitely a degree upward towards the tail head. I'm gonna turn it so that wipe some of the lube onto the vulva. Then I'm going to actually insert the speculum at kind of an upward angle. She's going to hunch. That's totally normal. She's um, actually pretty relaxed right now. And I'm just going to kind of gently get that lubricant, you know, in there. Okay, so now we're going to let her settle. I'm going to wipe a little bit of that extra off. Sorry if the lighting is not so good. Speaking of lighting, here's my light. We can put that there. I'm gonna go ahead and look. I'm gonna have Ray um, pause the video just real quick while I um, adjust myself here. Start recording again. So this dough has a pretty nice um, cervical opening. Unfortunately, I don't think we can capture that on the video, um, but her mucus looks just perfect. Um, I can see there's like, I call them papillae, they're like a small nodules that indicate the uh, entrance of the os. It's called the os. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start trying to work uh, my first gun through and see what we have. Okay, so I found the os actually pretty quickly on the stove, um, and now I actually just go by feel. You don't really need to look at this point, um, besides just making sure that you don't have semen um, pooling backward or coming out, uh, which we don't want. There, I've got um, one ring for sure. I, I know I'm right, right on the cervix now. Uh, see, I'm twisting, manipulating a little bit. I'm also, uh, if these goats get a little too rank and moving around a lot, what I'll do is I'll put my knee right under the belly, the body, and it just kind of supports them. It also lifts that cervix up on some of the older does. This is a young doe, so I'm not. She's not really low. I just want to do it to, to help her to settle down a little bit. I'm not really getting any progress forward, um, but you have to be patient. 
And that's a big thing about doing AI. You need to be able to kind of not freak out and just keep working. Oh, there, popped. Definitely went through one pop there for sure. That's nice. That makes me very happy. She's eating and she's just relaxed and I'm just gonna gently just hold um, pressure here and see if we can get, oh, boom. I don't know if that was captured on the video, but it definitely went in uh, another ring. So actually, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, there. It's actually, uh, she's sucking the, the gun in now. I'm not pushing, and it went in on its own. So I'm going to start depositing semen here very slowly. Very slowly. I feel really good, though, about my placement. I don't like to go in like all the way. Sometimes I hear people, oh, see this, this gun wants to go even further, but I'm actually not going to push. I've gone through three rings now and I, I'm not going to uh, push any further. She's just really uh, feeling pretty correct here. And I'm just gonna keep very slowly depressing that plunger here. It's, it might be even hard to pick up, but um, then I will check just to make sure that there's no semen pooling. And um, I use semen mostly put up by processors who use um, egg-based extenders. And I actually like the egg-based extenders because they are a yellowish color. And you can see that in the cervix uh, if you're getting pooling, if you're getting any kind of uh, blowback it's called. If you're getting that with an egg-based uh, semen extender, you can see it very clearly. So now I'm just going to go ahead and finish. Um, I'm going to see if we can get her just a little bit more food. We're going to pause the video. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let her sit like this for just a second while we get her a little more food, and then I'm going to put the second gun in. Okay, okay so now I'm going to try There we go. I'm on the os. We're going to try, and you can actually notice this, this uh, mucus that's on my finger here when I pulled out that first gun. Um, it's a real good consistency. See how stretchy it is? It's not just dripping right off my finger. Uh, hopefully maybe you can see that on the video. That's what we want to see. We don't want this to drip. That would be too early. I think I'm feeling really good about this. I got through on that first gun real easy, but now I'm feeling like I'm not getting a little enough forward. And again, just don't be afraid to spin the gun around, wiggle it a little bit. I mean, we want to be gentle, but you have to use a little bit of force. There we go. I feel I feel like I got a little bit more. Sometimes you need to angle it. And sometimes if you're not getting any forward progress, um, sometimes it is a good idea to just start depositing a little semen because then you can see if it's if you're wrong. And also sometimes depositing that little bit of semen helps to lubricate things. That's weird. I got through so easy on the first one, so I guess I guess I should have. Oh, there! Boom, boom! I really moved through some rings there. I don't know what she's doing here, but you have to just kind of go with it, I guess. Stand up. But yeah, so since I went through so much space there pretty quickly, I'm going to go ahead and just deposit that second straw. There we go. Honey. Whoop. Now when they cough like that, make sure you hold steady. And I'm going to reevaluate it, make sure I'm okay and that things didn't fall out.
looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and just slowly put the rest of that twist it a little bit. Don't be afraid to move this gun around and don't be afraid to relax and scratch your dough and make sure she's got food and make sure she's comfortable. Definitely going to be a lot better rate of conception if the, if the dough is calm and you are calm. I'm just going to go ahead and put the rest of this straw. It's also really important to know the quality of your semen. I know the quality of the semen. I've evaluated it. I owned the buck when it was processed. I've only been the only one that's ever handled it. Um, so I feel really comfortable about using it. Um, but if you have any doubts, you know, in a microscope is a great investment. Um, so now when we're done like that, uh, we don't just pull everything out right away. I try to take things in stages. I'll take my light out and just let her relax. And then I, then I pull my gun out. I do this in steps and I twist it a little bit as I'm pulling it. Very good. And then you look, look, that's beautiful. Shows the mucus, the consistency. We don't want it to, to drip right. I mean, this mucus is perfect. It's somewhat cloudy. It's stretchy, but it's not just dripping right onto the floor, nor is it um, thick like custard. We definitely don't want thick because think about sperm swimming through cheese. It's like swimming through mud. And then you can look into your gun and make sure you don't have any what we call blowback and there is none. I see a plug at the end of the sheath, so I know I got all the semen out. And now I would remove the speculum. And I do this with just a kind of a twisting motion, just gently, you know, to kind of break the suction a little bit here. Just gently twist, make sure you have a good hold. This, this is glass. If you're using plastic, it's not, not such a big deal. Um, you can evaluate now, did we get any dribble of semen into the speculum? No, we did not. There's no pooling of semen in here. You would see it, especially with the egg-based extenders, they're yellow. Okay, so there's one more thing that I wanna show you guys, and this is personal preference, uh, maybe controversial. But I was taught this by a cattle guy, and it seems to work. So I'm actually going to stimulate the clitoris on this dough to uh, stimulate the oxytocin to help her to ovulate and to finish the, the heat cycle process here. You can also milk, which I'm going to milk her later, but milking or massaging the udder works the same if you don't feel comfortable doing this, but I'm going to do this. I just take put a glove. And I actually just, like when the dough gets bread, she hunches up like that. And I do that about twice. So when you watch a dough get bread in real life, she's going to hunch when the buck breeds her. And that's why. And that's how I do my AI. And I felt really good about this AI. Um, we got penetration. We did not get any pooling of semen in the speculum. We didn't get any blowback in my gun. Um, this dough has, has a kind of a long heat cycle. She's at, I, I think this was a really good AI. Anytime that I get through rings, I feel happy. So um, anyway, I hope you guys take away from this uh, just to be confident. Take deep breaths. Take your time. Um, if you can have a wonderful helper like I did tonight, and it will add to your success. So thank you so much uh, and hope you learned something.